Hey everybody, this is Doug Jenkins. I'm here with Freddie DeMarco. This is our How to Mic a Acoustic Guitar Basics Level 1. So Freddie's going to go through this with you guys. We have the basic miking of this instrument. So without further ado, we're going to let Freddie take it away. Okay, so choosing the mic, the first thing, I could have chosen a large diaphragm and think more like what you might think of as a vocal microphone, a larger diaphragm microphone, or a smaller pe uh, pencil condenser, and I chose the pencil condenser style um, because of what I would want to get out of this guitar. And this first lesson is really just getting a basic guitar sound with one microphone. So either way, if you go with the uh, bigger acoustic one, the actual, um, uh, you want more of like a dreadnought type sound, a fatter acoustic, maybe you do want to go and at least audition two mics at once and try to find your place somewhere around the 12th or 14th fret here and in this case eh, I'm, I'm maybe 10 inches back from it you can be 6 inches 12 14 inches to taste that's how much room sound you want now see there's where if you use the larger diaphragm microphone and you're picking up more sound you're going to get more of that um, low end that you're getting from this part of the guitar and you may not want that. I know in a dense mix, you know, Doug, how many yeah. times are we fighting a dense mix and we really don't want a big booming guitar if it's going to be playing with many other instruments. Right, and you'd have that for that certain genre, that certain mix in our mixing videos and stuff like that. We'll, we'll talk about this, but yeah, that can sway the mix one way or the other, the way you're going to mic the acoustic. Um, absolutely. For this purpose, you know, I want it to sound like an acoustic, not too boomy, not too high. And uh, when I say high, I mean jangly, the higher strings jangling. I'm always looking for a nice even sound between the low, middle, and high strings of the guitar. For example, the bass notes, the mid notes, and the high notes. go for as even as possible, as opposed to maybe the high notes are a lot brighter than the low, uh, the low notes are dead or the low notes are boomy and the high notes aren't really picking up so well. Part of that is the guitar. And oddly enough, very often cheap guitars sound the best. I mean, I, there's been many cases where a $300, $400 wow. acoustic is on a hit record because it's focused, it's more mid-range. It doesn't have a lot of the beautiful tonal woods that are producing lower frequencies and lower mids and often you don't want that so don't think that if you just have a run-of-the-mill acoustic you're not going to get a great sound speaking of that also as a price point the other thing is there's many companies now that have these knockoff mics for example um, uh, Neumann yeah, condenser yeah. Uh, 84 it's a pencil condenser uh, is famous one of the best acoustic guitars one of the best overheads hi-hat microphones and I have a WA a warm audio WA 84 version of it and it shot out against the original wonderfully so you don't have to have tons of money in this to just get a really nice acoustic for people that um, are acoustic players and are looking for a good rig something like this and a nice you know preamp in your recording so you know? if i speak on microphones if you're if you're a starting out and you're trying to get a like a dual purpose like say you got one that can do do acoustic but do vocal I mean, what would you recommend for something like that on this, with this kind of thing? For that purpose, not this microphone. Okay. Okay. I, I, would, I would go with a larger diaphragm. Okay. Um, so if it is a, a home studio or you're somebody that's doing a project studio yeah. and you're, you're really budgeting on less mics, yeah, a great vocal mic will often serve as a good acoustic guitar mic. Yeah, and, that, and that's a roll-off. Right, and that's why I was asking you because I think if you're, if, you know, as a home recording studio, I mean, that's good news, you know. You can actually get a pretty good, decent recording at home. Um, but do you recommend that? Oh, yeah. I mean, I, to this day, it depends on the guitar and what I'm going for. I would say start there, and it would be then a luxury to then grab a pencil condenser for your acoustic. Absolutely. If you have a really okay. good vocal mic and you're going to not sing at the same time, you could use that mic as an overdub. Like start with your acoustic and then sing over that. Just use maybe the roll-off. We'll have a roll-off on some microphones or even on your um, your mixer, whatever okay. you're using to go in. And Doug can explain 
the uh, low end roll off, how that could make it act a little more like a pencil conductor. Okay, yeah, so that we were just, you know, I was trying to do dual purpose here, Freddie. I know I threw a curveball, but, um, <laughs> you know, because the whole course is about how to how to record at home, how to get the basics of all this. The, the acoustic is an amazing instrument. Freddie's played it for years. Um, and do you have anything else that you want to not do when you're recording an acoustic? For this lesson, let's not go with two mics. You'll often hear about uh, engineers putting room full of mics out. Well, a lot of times you're only going to use one or just want to hear different mics. But there are different techniques where you could do stereo miking. Sometimes um, there's XY miking, all kinds of things we'll get into. But for this first lesson, just a single microphone. The reason I really say that is with two microphones, you can run into something called phasing problems and phase issues. This way, you're safe. If you find a nice place, you know, and usually it's not going to be right on the sound hole, but find a nice place where you're getting the sound you're looking for and go with that and then work with that with compression and EQ in the box. Um, I would go with mic placement first, but the other reason I would recommend one mic uh, is to learn how to mic an acoustic guitar. With two mics, you're really not learning if you haven't studied one yet. I, I like to see what does it do if you mic it down here. And just listen for an example. Now, I'm not hearing this back, so I really don't know what it's doing, but I know it's gonna have an effect. When I, I'm over here, see, sometimes when you double mic, you'll mic closer to the fingers. Sometimes you'll mic down here, sometimes an XY pattern. But watch what happens when I, when I mic, and you'll hear the sound more coming off the neck of the guitar. Now I'm going to just roll over and move over and you'll hear it change. This part of the guitar has a really nice tone to it. Sometimes you can mic up and... On the sound hole you'll hear more body but it could be kind of boomy. So a good fail safe is 12th or 14th fret, aiming it right there. And again, I'm probably that far from it. So we're, we're looking at, because of the way the angle of the camera is, that's about a 10 inch, yeah. somewhere between eight and, eight and 16 inches, somewhere in there, all, all, all depending on what. Now, if I'm finger picking, I would just juice the preamp a little hotter. I might stay at the same spot, um, or I could juice the preamp just a little more and move in a little more and compensate for a finger style like that. So it's a gentle style, but yet you want to still pick up the articulation. I would just get a little bit closer and again, boost the preamp. I would do all this before ever trying to engage an EQ, especially at a home studio where there could be sounds that you're not hearing that will come through, especially on the high end. So in a recording scene though, you would probably like, if you were going to come up on the mic and get that nice finger picking, you're, once that's done, I mean, in a recording situation, you're going to want to you know, do a multi-track of that recording. You don't want to be trying to move back and forth like you're a performer in the studio, um, right? <laughs> exactly. When I when I so, record myself, yeah. I actually use the same tape I tape off the council with, and I'll tape the front of my shoes so I know at least I'm sitting in the same spot, yeah. and I'm trying to remember where I'm at. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah, that's a great And here's great another point. thing that I was thinking about, because I did it, I think, three times in this video, tap my foot. And I went, wow, man, that's something you pick up in a video. Yeah, and, here, and you'll pick this up. I'll just tap and listen to this. It's amazing because <laughs> these small little subtle things that change this recording for the, for the, they could be disaster. You have the best take going and you hear this little, you know, snapping or this little smack on that mic stand. Um, things to be, just be paying attention to when yeah, we're tracking and this thing. From a performer standpoint, I yeah. would say necklaces, chains, wrist chains, yeah. uh, anything like that. Uh, yeah. uh, you may, no one may notice it going down. That's the funny thing. Even a great engineer, you know, they, but then when yep. the compressors come in later to suck the sound in, it's amazing what's down there on the noise floor. And everything and picks up. Everything <laughs> picks up. And it, as, a, as a new recording, if you're a new recording engineer, what Freddie just said is, is absolutely powerful. If you compress something, you're, you're taking dynamic range, pulling it in, and then you're gaining that. So you're lifting that. So you're making that image. So 
like he said, if you have some, sm so, you know, just subtle noise in the background, you're at your house and, you know, there's a, a washing machine way distant in the background, you're going to pick it up. I mean, actually, when the microphone is a condenser mic and it's good at what it does, it's going to capture that and come into your recording. So think about those things. And, you know, you're not always hearing everything that's there. So yeah, that was a good point, man. And another really recommendation would be because ultimately you would think of signal flow. Mm -hmm. The player, the instrument, the mic goes through a cable, then we're hitting a preamp with the an pre. EQ and all that. Um, I would rec after that, I usually hit compression. Uh, we're going through a little compression right now. Um, but don't start with compression. Just go direct in and get used to what the mic does. Get used to the SPL, the sound pressure level of the mic. Get used to the dynamic range you have without a compressor helping you. So if you hit like this, your that meters, your level, right, up. right. Understand the dynamic range of which you're playing in and how the microphone relates to that. And the recording, the signal to noise ratio, the recording will come out better. You won't have so many spikes. And then what I'll do is is, is utilizing that te technique both as a player and as an engineer. Then the third thing would be I would put a little bit of a compressor on that just to help even out the string sound and to get a little bit more attack on the pick if I want that. But start very basic and just learn what the mic sounds like in this region. In this preferred region, this is your fail safe region right here. You'll always get something usable here the sound hole, and then the body. So that's four areas of close miking. And then, of course, try room miking. Um, try putting this mic above head and hear what that sounds like. Uh, there's been many recordings where you'll hear a guitar kind of distant and it sounds really real that way. Like there's a singer maybe sitting on the other side of the porch playing. They'll do a lot of that with miking. Sometimes with technology after the fact, but always go for miking techniques first. So one microphone, learn this right here this latitude from here to here, what, how it affects, and you'll start building up an understanding of what you might like to do when you're finger picking, when you're strumming, if you're gonna overdub a second guitar. Uh, the most basic thing of all, make sure you tune yeah. between takes. That's another thing that, uh, believe it or not, even at the professional level, <laughs> you'll be getting going <laughs> writing with people, a writing thing, and, and you'll notice later that maybe a G-string was a little out of tune on the second take. It doesn't match the first, so don't so, underestimate that. So you think, now that miking technique from, from here to there, when you're talking, that instrument, and that, that's, that's a choice thing, right? That's like as you become your own artist, you know your band, you know your sound, that's a sound thing right when we're this microphone i mean there's no there's no right or wrong in this case but there is a you can over preamp it you know you can you can have noise in the background you can uh be out of tune i mean all these things are big deals and you know if you if you keep the main thing the main thing if you want a brighter sound you're going to go up top you know if you want more of a body sound you're going to go down you know towards the body of the guitar right all along yeah. being careful how the production is going to happen if you're going to right. have a lot of low-end instruments no need to be muddying it up doing this just the guitar is only going to speak in the right. high end anyways let's focus like that when we record it you know? so if you're doing like a like a cover song or something or you're because i see a lot of this stuff mm -hmm. where you're doing something for facebook or social media or whatever so it'll have a lot of body Right, That's and you'll have a lot of body on that instrument. And you're, as a mixing engineer, I would want that body so I could, you know, add room or, or really pay attention to the room. And obviously, Freddie's going to get into some different videos using multi techniques on a on an acoustic, but with one microphone staying center is pretty much it I mean, it's very that, focused it yeah. sounds like an acoustic guitar okay it doesn't sound like it's distant it's phase or anything like that right around that 12th or 14th fret if you're aiming it in there you'd be surprised how much of this you're still getting gotcha. whereas you go to the sound hole it's often too boomy i think uh, another thing is look at your waveforms and okay. judge your initial scratch track and see how much you're really spiking accents because when you see an acoustic guitar guitar track and then there's spikes all over the place. Uh, if those spikes aren't matching or if they're unneeded, sometimes they're very annoying. Gotcha. So what you think you're going to do live in a happy hour club someplace where everyone's talking and I'm going to back off the mic and you're doing this kind of thing where your verses are here and then choruses are there. Like yeah. So yeah. I have a figure that's going. 
live, you know, yeah. and it probably is really a good thing. In the studio, though, there's a way to play. You don't need to over accent. In fact, you almost, you still put good rhythm, good soul, good swing, good touch on the instrument, but the actual accenting and bashing really okay. isn't preferred as in the studio. Watch your waveforms and try to, you want accents, you want dynamic range, but not as much as I, I notice a lot of the students and a lot of beginning recording people come in and a okay. lot of people will have to play their tracks for them when it comes to acoustic, and that's a big reason why. We just can't get it smooth and just think of brushing the strings into the mic and check your waveform for that. Totally different. The, the accents yeah. were still totally there, different. but they're part of the part. They're not screaming out because a microphone's going to pick that up as like almost a hard clipping. Just try to be more musical. And if you are an engineer, not a player, work with your players that way. Kind of explain yeah. in the studio it's a little different. And the way to explain that to a guitarist is brush the strings, rake over the strings more. And when you accent, don't muscle them. Just give it a little bit more. Yeah, and that to to an engineer, that's that's just a, it's even. It, it seems like you're doing your own compression. It's an even image. It's going to come out better. Because on the, the fix for that is massive compression. Yeah, and then and now you've probably ruined the sound you were going for to get that. That's awesome, man. So, well, hey, this is Freddie Demarco. Awesome, man. No, Love I'm Freddie Demarco. You're Doug. This is Jenkins. Doug Jenkins. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's an amazing thing. I'm learning along with it, man. It's so fun. So, um, thanks, man. That was cool. I actually learned a lot about that instrument. And I'm Doug Jenkins. I'm Freddie DeMarco, and it was a pleasure. Awesome. We'll see you guys.